Well, welcome. So good to see you. Pikes, so great to have you guys here. Wow, really, really good. And anybody else who's visiting as well, so good to have you here. Um, being in God's house with God's people, um, honoring our Lord and Savior who, who loves us and has chosen us and has, 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 has captured our hearts. And, and, and we want to we wanna now magnify his name by, by honoring him. Before we get into the word, let's, let's come to the Lord. Let's bow our heads. Let's close our eyes. And let's spend a, a few moments in silent prayer. O majestic God, whom we sit before at this very moment, our lives are an open book before you. There is nothing that's within us that can be hidden. As the scriptures say, you search us deep within. You sift us. You try us. Thank you that your spirit does his work deep within our hearts. Thank you that, that we are a people that cannot but just honor you and praise you. Lord, I know that out of this mouth, mouth both, both praise and, and curse comes. And, 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 and Lord, I would, if, if, if I could have it your way, I, I, I would every single moment of the day. But I, I know how, how sinful my heart is. And I know that, that, that sin wants to ravage every part of my life. And, but Lord, I, I bow before you right now as your servant. We do as a congregation, Lord, and, 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 and we look to you the author and perfecter of our faith, with the knowledge that you can change us and you are the only one that is able to change us. I know that many times we look within for the answer, but the answer is outside of us. The answer is outside of this world. The answer is outside of this universe. The answer is with you, Jesus. So as we as we read your word this morning, as we come to grips with, with what it has to say about who we are, Father, would you illuminate our hearts and our lives so that we can turn wholeheartedly to you, so that our lives may be transformed and renewed as you would have it. Oh, Lord, would, would your spirit be be em- so, so strong with us this morning that we cannot turn to our old ways, that, that everything we think and say and do would be in line with who you are. Lord, would you quieten our hearts and our minds, remove everything from our minds so that we can focus on who you are. Oh, dear Jesus. Would you visit with us? Would your spirit so awaken us from inside? Help us this morning. For your glory we pray. Amen. Well, it seems like we're on the downward kind of spiral to Christmas. Um, you already go into the shops and you see everything all over the place. There's Christmas trees, there's, there's all kinds of things. And you, 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 you can't help but, but think, man, is this, is this too quick? <laughs> is, it, is it too quick that Christmas is here already? And, and we're kind of thinking of next year and middle of next year. and um, It's just crazy. I... Um, the reason I was late, I went to go and um, uh, go to another service this morning at Eastside Community Church. They had 16 people being baptized this morning. It's just, just amazing and, and, and 
one of the people that were being baptized is uh, somebody that I've been mentoring over a period of time. And, um, and just to see him grow and, and, and take God's word and, and, and chew it over and love it. And then see him, not only him, but his wife as well. Um, his daughter came to know Christ. And then, and then um, she brought her dad. Uh, Mum didn't really want to know anything about it. And then, and then God was impacting on his life. Sat with Christianity, explained and explained it to him. And, and um, we had many conversations, prayed many times, went through many scriptures. And then they did Christianity Explained again, and his wife came to know Christ, and Christ broke into her life and broke into his life, and, and now they've been baptized, and it was incredible to see Imogen, the daughter, baptizing the father, and then both of them baptizing the mum. It's just, just amazing. Seeing lives being transformed, that's, that's what God's business is about. He's about, about seeing our lives being transformed from, from what we know to what he wants. There's a, there's a, 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 a certainty of, 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 of a transformation that only happens in and through Christ Jesus as he wants to live in us and, and, and change us from the inside out. It's exciting and it's scary. I don't know about you. I remember when I was young, all I wanted to do was play soccer. That's all I want, be a professional soccer player and didn't care about anything else. And then God just miraculously through his son breaks into my life. And then, and then I'm scared. But what if I have to give up? What about... And then he answers the questions. And then slowly but surely, the assurance of who Christ is breaks into my life. And then I want nothing more than to honor him. Sorry, Sharon. Can you get me a tissue? My nose is going crazy. Uh, so it's, 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 it's with that in mind... I want you to think of every sermon you've ever heard. Okay, I know you leave this place five minutes and you can't remember what the pastor's talked about. I do the same thing. But I want you to think back to, 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 to the sermons, every sermon that you've heard, every sermon that you've watched on TV, every bit of scripture that you've opened up and you read. I want, to think, I want you to think about the things that have impacted your life. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Thank you so much. Gracias. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> That's true. But at this moment, I want you to bring all of that knowledge together. At this one place, right now, bring it all together. Think of the things that you've heard, things that have been said, things that have spoken to you that, that, that has either penetrated your heart, almost like a knife, or has warmed you to, to the knowledge that, that Christ Jesus loves you, that he died for you. He died to bring reconciliation between you Far from God, me far from God in my sin, back to his father. What an incredible thought. So I want you to think along the lines of three things today. And I want you to carry this message along with you. And I want you to mull it over as much as you possibly can. Those three things are our origin, our purpose, and our destiny. If you're a Christian, you've been in Christian circles for any amount of time, those three subjects would have come up at some time. Maybe not together, maybe in separate places, but I want to bring them all together. I want to bring everything that you've heard and you've learned right to one place. Hebrews 1, uh, chapter 1, verse 1, 2 says, God, after he spoke long ago to the fathers in the prophets, in many portions, and in many ways, in the last days, has spoken to us in his Son. God reveals himself in and through Scripture. Scripture is divine revelation. Scripture is, is, is revelation given to each one of us so that it would awake our hearts and make us turn to God. He's the one that needs to do the awakening in our hearts. We could never know God's identity, his attributes, his perspectives or commands if God himself hadn't revealed it to us. So there's a revelation that is happening and has happened 
since the world began. Just think about that moment, that very moment when you came to a realization that you needed salvation. All you know to be true about God, you have read in the Bible or have heard it being said from a pulpit. Think about the years of sermons you have listened to. What do they reveal about God? Each one of them, what do they reveal about God? Think about the Old Testament. God gathers for himself a people, and he wants to love these people. But there's recommendations. There's both blessings and there's curses. And when things are going well, and, 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 and the people are following God, there's incredible blessings, incredible pros- prosperity. But as soon as man gets arrogant and wants to follow his own ways, what happens? There's curses. Think about the New Testament. God, through Jesus Christ, shows how a father should love his children and sacrifices his only son, his only begotten son, to reconcile himself back to humanity. All of this so that we could know certain things about God. And by that knowledge and wisdom, we would be saved through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. There is no other way to be saved except through the blood of Jesus Christ. Now think about your worldview as a believer. Think about all you, you, you hold dear as someone who is called an ambassador of Christ. Everything that you, that, you, that you hold in your heart and know to be true. If it were not for scripture, we would not be able to know our origin, where we come from, our purpose in life. Why we are here and our destiny. What is going to be our final state? Think about the worldview of a secular humanist. Well, the origin is, is, is from prime ordeal soup, just pond scum that they've developed over billions and billions of years. Think about their purpose. Whatever they see fit, that's their purpose. Whatever I want to do for my pleasure, that's what I want to do. Look out for number one. And finally, their destiny is to not exist anymore. To be, then not to be. Gone. I don't know about you, but there's no hope in any of that story. If you think of it that way, there's, there's, there's no hope. You're born to die, and then that's it. There's more to the story. We can't just end there. And that's where God's revelation comes true in our hearts and lives. There's so much more to the story than that. As believers in God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, our origin, purpose, and destiny are very, very different. Very different to to, to somebody who just believes that this is all we have, and it cannot get better than this. Let's take each one and break them down. First of all, our origin. It all starts and ends with God. Genesis 1 verse 1, in the beginning, God. He is the, 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 there is no cause outside of who Christ is, outside of who God is. He is the first cause. And he causes everything to come into being. In the beginning, God. Secondly, it all ends with God. Revelation twenty two twenty. Surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. In the beginning, God. At the end, Christ Jesus coming to take his bride back with him. All those reconciled, all those who who have got a love for the Father, who've been transformed and renewed by the Holy Spirit, will go to live with him. All of history will come to an end at the coming of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. God will bring all of creation to a close at Judgment Day. Our origin can be found in... In Genesis 1.27, God created them male and female. In his image, he created them. We are image bearers of God. We are the crowning glory of the creation. After he created everything else, he created men and women. Can you see? Look around you. I don't know about you, but when, when I go into nature and, and, and I hear the kookaburras going nuts and, 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 and being swooped by magpies, I just look around and I say, Wow, Lord Jesus, look at all you've done. I go to Cleveland Point and I sit there and I'll have a quiet time and, and I just look and the, and the water's as flat as anything. God created all of that for me. That says a lot. That says that he loves me. 
and that he wants to display his glory through nature so that it can point one way, and that's to the Father. God created us, not because he was lonely, but for his glory and his pleasure. God didn't need us. People will go around and telling you, yes, you know what, he was so lonely. Forget it. There was perfect unity within the, 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 the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Perfect unity. No need for us. But he desired for someone to love him. God created us for a love relationship with himself. God knitted us together in the womb. Psalm 139. Let's go there. 139 from verse 13 to verse 16. And I want, to, I want you to get an, a, a real glimpse of who we are and how God created us. Psalm 139 verses 13 to 16. For you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you for I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are all your works. My soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my own formed substance. In your book were written every one of them. Isn't it incredible that, 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 that God knit you together? I think I've said this before, but can you imagine the size of those knitting needles? <laughs> they must have been incredibly small to knit you together. Every little last bit of you, God put you together. You were not here, there by accident. God didn't create you by accident. You didn't just happen. No. God for his glory created you. God the Son, Jesus Christ, was there with God the Father in the beginning. John 1, 2, and 3. He was in the, in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Christ, the Savior of all, was there right in the beginning. As creation was being pushed forward through the word of, of God's mouth, Christ Jesus was there. So you can see, you have an incredible origin. Your origin is in the very heart of God. You were created for the glory of God and to his great pleasure. Now let's look at our purpose. What is our usefulness? Why are we here? The question has plagued mankind for, for many, many years on this earth. You get college professors that, that, that speak always of these, these young people that come and they're bright-eyed, bushy-tailed to uni and they go through the first semester and then into the second semester and all of a sudden, who am I? Where am I going? What is my purpose? And then this one professor says he gets the same question all the time. He says, I don't have, people say, I don't have a purpose. I'm going to go and find myself. <laughs> and the professor says, hang on, hang on, hang on. There you are. <laughs> I found you. But you see, in Christ Jesus, we find our purpose in life. There seems to be a hopelessness in the hearts and minds of people when we come to this question about purpose. What does God say about this? Let's go back to Scripture. Let's get a biblical view of what our purpose is. Ecclesiastes 12, 13 says, Fear God and keep His commands. Our purpose is to fear God. No, you're not scared of Him like He's going to smack you any moment, but you've got this incredible reverence. You love God so much. It's just like a father or a mother. They brought you into this world. And you got this reverence for your parents. The same way we should have reverence for the father. 1 Corinthians 10, 31. No matter what you do, do everything to, to the glory of God. Your purpose in everything that you do, whether you work or study or just at home, do everything to the glory of God. Micah 6 verse 8, do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with your God. Those, those are incredible verses. If you lived your life to that, God would be incredibly pleased with you as a believer. Isaiah 43, 21, we are made to declare God's praise. 
God wants us to be praising him always. Psalm 156, uh, verse 6. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Like I was saying about the kookaburras. They go nuts. And in, in that song, there's a praise to God that we can never understand. Never understand. Romans 8, 28. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good, for those who are called according to his purpose. You have been called according to the purpose of God the Father. And that purpose is clear. Praise God. Honor God. Obey God. That's the purpose that we have. When we, when we obey that purpose, then God really blesses us incredibly. And it's not about prosperity. It's not about a numerical number. It's about enjoying God for all that he is and all that he's given us. The Westminster Shorter Catechism states, the chief end of man is to glorify God and enjoy him forever. Ever. Let's think about that. To glorify God. To take him and, and put him as number one. To glorify him as, as, as creator God. As God who loves us so much that he gave his own son. And then enjoy him forever. When we are obedient to God, then he, he, he blesses us and we enjoy him. No matter what comes, if it's sickness, if it's family distress, it doesn't matter. God will be glorified and we can enjoy him forever. We are created in the image of God to display or spread God everywhere. That is our purpose, to spread God everywhere. Creation was created for man, but God created man for himself. We are created in the image of God, not to become arrogant and autonomous. It is so easily done. That's the message of this world. Just be yourself. Obey your thirst. Just do it. We were created in the image of God to reflect the glory of our maker. Image bearers are glory spreaders. God has placed his image on you, each one of you. And so doing, we need to spread that image. We need to be like a mirror and reflect the glory that God is, has put into us. We need to show people who God is. Just think of the election that's coming up. Who's excited about the election? <laughs> I can see you all are. Um, think about a party that you're going to vote for. Don't shout it out. Um, think about that party. Those who promote the party on promoting themselves. They are espousing who they are promoting. We are promoting God. We must promote all that he stands for. Not just the blessing, but also the curses. We must understand that, that it's a two-sided coin. On the one side, there is the wrath of God, which we hardly ever hear about in church nowadays. And the other side, there's the blessings of God. Those two go together. They are inseparable. And as our purpose in life, we need to speak both sides, both the blessings and the curses. Our life's purpose is to glorify God in all we do, in all we say, in all we think. Think about the last 20 minutes of your life. How much glory has gone back to God? How much do we concentrate on ourselves, on our problems, on everything that's happening in life? The problems of my son, my daughter, my parents, my work tomorrow. Man, but God doesn't want that for us. He says you've been designed for a greater purpose, and that's to reflect the glory that is his. And once that is done, to enjoy him forever. So that's our origins, where we come from. That's our purpose. What we're going to do here, finally we've got our destiny. What is our final state? To live forever. Do you know that? <laughs> Each one of you is going to live forever. Maybe not in this, it won't be in this, 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 this tent that we've got at the moment. I know some of you are saying, Jesus, come now because this body is shut. <laughs> but, but, but God, he's created your soul for eternity, not for now. We were never supposed to be temporary. We were supposed to be eternal. And there's two places. In an everlasting joy, 
You know those people that walk into a room and their smile just lights up the room? And you want to be close to them because it's like infectious. It almost rubs off on you and you're around them and all of a sudden you get a smile and you hear them talk and laugh and, 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 and you just want to be around them. That's just a little glimpse of what heaven's going to be like. Seeing Jesus face to face, looking in the eyes of our Savior, the one who died for each one of us. Then we have everlasting agony, separated from God for all eternity. Sure, we can create our own destiny. 70 years plus we've got on this earth. Let's live it to the max. Let's do whatever we can. Get as much as we can. The person with the most toys at the end wins, don't they? (laughs) No. What you do in this world reflects in all eternity. Your final state of where you're going to be for all eternity is determined here and now. Philippians 3, 18 to 20, many walk as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their end is destruction. Their God is their belly. They glory in their shame. Their mind is set on earthly things. And then verse 20 says, but our citizenship is in heaven. We uh, just recently became um, Aussie citizens. Yay! <laughs> but before then, we, kinda, we were kind of in limbo. We kind of South Africans, but not quite. Our passports had run out, and we weren't going to renew them because we knew, well, we don't want to be South African citizens anymore. But we still were kind of connected to South Africa. But now, our citizenship is here in Australia. And here we've planted ourselves, and we will not be moved. This is our country, and we love it. We absolutely love it. The same goes for our citizenship that is in heaven. We think that this is the place, and and we live like there's no tomorrow. But you know what? Our citizenship, our true passport is in heaven. And God has given us the Holy Spirit as a down payment on your life and my life that one day we will be there. But we need to start living like we're in eternity in heaven right now. It's not one day. It's right now. We've got that passport. And we will be transported into heaven one day. Our destiny should be one that is shaped by, number one, Christ's sacrifice. Understand that, that because Christ has died and has paid for our sins and rose to sit at the right hand of God, interceding on our behalf, moment by moment, day by day, he has overcome the world. Secondly, forgiveness of sin in Jesus Christ. Our sins have been forgiven. If Christ has broken into our lives and we are living day by day for him, something has changed. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For by grace you have been saved. God's grace has saved you from a life that would be agony for all eternity. So that on judgment day, we would be counted as redeemed by the blood of Jesus. This body we inhabit was never meant to last. Our souls will forever and ever. This world one day will be destroyed by fire and we will stand before the God of all creation to give an account of how we've lived our lives. I don't know about you, but when I go to a school, this is just a picture of my upbringing. Um, When I go into a principal's office, I still kind of (laughs) shake. That's just a picture of when we stand before the God of all creation, the final judge, the ultimate judge, and he looks into your heart. And you know, you know beyond a shadow of doubt where you're going to be. As you look over your life, what does it characterize? Do you say with Frank Sinatra and many others, I did it my way? I did whatever I I did uh, to please myself and to get ahead. I tramped on anybody I could. Everything I did was for me. It wasn't for anybody else. Or do you reflect the glory back to himself and give him all the glory? It's a choice you have to make. 
Nobody's holding a gun to your head. You can, you can be here and have a veneer of Christianity and everybody can believe that, that, man, this person is so close to God. But when you go home and in the silence, when you sit there, when there's nobody else around and somehow you've got this emptiness that's inside of you, where do you go? Let Scripture be your guide. I'll leave you with these last three questions. Brother, sister, what is your origin? Where do you originate? Is it in the heart of God or on this created planet? Brother, sister, what is your purpose in life? What were you created for? Were you created for your own pleasure? Or is there a higher purpose? And then thirdly, what is your destiny? What is your destiny? What will happen one day when all of this is gone and it's no more and it's been burnt up and there's nothing more? Where will you be? Think about those three questions. I want them to plague you. I want them to, to, to mull over in your mind. I want you to think about them over the next couple of weeks. Go to Scripture and have a look at each Scripture. Come to a proper biblical worldview, a biblical understanding of what your origin is, what your purpose is, and where you will spend eternity. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, Wow. There are no words to describe who you are. There are no words to describe what you've done. And there's no words to describe the glory that we'll see, we will see when we see you face to face. Oh Lord, I long for that day, but, but you've called me for now. For now, I need to be your ambassador. For now, I need to be somebody who loves you, looks to you. Help me be your image bearer. Lord, I want to glorify your name. And I want people to know that my allegiance, my everything belongs to you. Help me to be true to my calling. For Jesus' sake we pray. Amen.